Have you ever suffered from book burnout or have you ever had a reading slump? Are you having one right now? Let's go ahead and talk about a few ways that you can deal with that. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Theo. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Today, I just wanted to do a quick video talking about reading slumps and book burnout. There's tons of videos out there already. Every time it happens to me, I scour the internet for articles and videos to figure out ways to go ahead and break through those reading slumps. So I just wanted to give my two cents, share a few ideas. There's gonna be a bunch on this list that you've probably seen and heard about before, and I'm hoping there's gonna be a few new ones. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the top 10 ways that you can break through that book burnout, get through that reading slump, reinvigorate yourself, keep that momentum, make sure you're enjoying the books that you're reading. These are in no particular order, so let's go ahead and start with tip number one, and that is to change genres. This is one that you've probably heard an awful lot before. It's worked for me in the past. It's worked for me recently, to be honest. And it's, uh, you know, if you're a fantasy reader, go ahead and try sci-fi or vice versa. If you're a fantasy and sci-fi mostly reader, try a horror book, try a thriller book, maybe something out of your comfort zone, maybe a thriller or a romance or historical fiction or a classic. Try and pick something somewhat different than what you typically read. And you don't have to go ahead and ditch that first book. You can go ahead and pick up a new one and try a little bit of that. And sometimes that's enough to kind of kickstart uh, that reading momentum again. But some people can't read two books at the same time. I never used to, but now it's something that I do all the time. I always have two, sometimes three, but mostly two books uh, going at any one time. And usually they're different genres. If they're the same, they're gonna be different enough or I just do my best to keep them, keep track of them because it's no different than watching a TV show, watching a couple different series at the same time, a couple episodes of this one, a couple episodes of that one. It's very similar. So you'd be surprised at how your brain can adapt. I would try picking up a different book, different genre, trying another one and seeing how that works. Tip number two is to try something shorter. Try a novella, try a short story. Uh, are you addicted to those huge fantasy books like I am? Try something different. Sometimes we just get burnt out by the length of these books. There are so many series that are three, four, five, 10, 12 books long. The books are five, six, seven, 800 pages long. It's not unreasonable to get burnt out by that. So try something short, fit in a novella, fit in a short story. I did that recently and it helped actually quite a bit. And not only that, but it helps sometimes just to feel like you're making more progress. Sometimes the momentum and the enjoyment comes down to feeling like you're reading more and getting more complete stories uh, in, in a shorter period of time. And some people feel happier when they know that they're making progress. If you're one of those people, I suggest trying something shorter. There are so many fantastic novellas and short stories that are 10, 12, 15, 100 pages long that you can, you can easily fit into your schedule. And so I would try that. Tip number two is to try something shorter. Tip number three is something that I do all the time, and that is to break up your reading into smaller chunks. I'm not the type of person that can sit down and read for two, three, four, five hours straight. I wish that I could, my capacity for reading would like quadruple if I could do that, but I'm just not built that way. So I read for 30, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half at a time, and over an hour is pushing it. So for me, I need to get up and do something different, and I'll get back to this tip later, but audiobooks are a huge way that I'm able to continue my reading and not just sit there and read for a prolonged period of time. Now, reading sprints are amazing for this. I've recently discovered those, as I'm sure a lot of you have. Um, I really enjoy that, getting together with people virtually or on, in person or whatever, and just sprinting for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, and then chatting about stuff, talking about what you read, talking about other stuff completely unrelated from books, and then getting back to reading a little bit later. And so for me, that's been amazing. I love reading sprints, and that is typically how I'll read. I'll read for, like I said, 30 minute to an hour chunks, and I'll do that you know, multiple times a day instead of just sitting down for two or three hours in an afternoon. That's just not how I work. And so reading in smaller chunks can sometimes help that momentum and keep you going with a book. I alluded to that in the previous one, but tip number four is to change the medium. So it can be a simple change. If you're reading a hardcover, try a paperback. If it's paperback, try an ebook, try an audiobook. Not everybody can listen to audio while you know they do stuff, or some people can't listen to audiobooks at all, and that's completely fine. But try something a little bit different, even if you have a trade paperback. Try a mass market paperback. Now, what if you don't wanna buy the same book in multiple formats? That's totally fine. You can go back to tip number one, try something different, try a different genre. So if you're stuck on a hardcover, maybe you have a paperback of a different book that you can read, and so try that. If you have a paperback, then maybe you want to try an ebook or an audiobook of a different genre or a different book completely and see how that works. For me, that works an awful lot is to switch up the medium. I like to 
you know, read eBooks, listen to audio when I'm doing stuff around the house. And then when I have time uh, in a cozy place, I like to just sit down and read a physical. I still love physical books, but that's not where I'm most productive all the time. So again, eBooks, audio, there's tons of media to choose from, switch that up. Speaking of switching it up, tip number five is to change location. Do you have a favorite spot that you read, a favorite chair, a favorite room? Maybe maybe you're lucky enough to have a huge study library that we all drool over. Um, try switching that up. Go to a library, go to a cafe, go to a friend's house, buddy read something. Anything that you can do to change the environment. Oh, even it can be simple like opening the blinds a bit and changing the light, color temperature of the room. Like that can make a huge difference. Put on the fireplace, do something different to create a little bit of a different mood, different atmosphere, but ideally you would take yourself out of that location and try something different. Try changing the location, changing where it is that you're reading. For me, I do this every now and then when I get up from reading and I put in my audio so that I can go continue on, you know, doing dishes or cooking or laundry or whatever it is. Um, that's how I change my location. I change my perception. I change my location. I, I get up and I do something different while I continue to read. That might not work for you. Maybe you just need to actually sit down and read somewhere different. Tip number six is to pick up a favorite book. Reread something that you already know that you love. You don't even have to reread the whole thing. Maybe you have a favorite part in a book. Go ahead and pick that up, read a few chapters of it, and you'll get that spark back uh, more often than not. I'm going to be rereading with a bunch of friends of mine a series that I adored growing up uh, next year. We're going to talk about that on the channel probably, and you'll know all about it by then. But yeah, go ahead and try something different. Pick up a book that you already know you like, something that was nostalgic, something that creates sparked a bit of you know magic for you in a particular genre. Maybe pick a, you know a favorite author. Maybe pick up a book by an author that inspired one of your favorite authors and try try and branch out that way. But yeah, go ahead and pick up something that you know that you're going to like that you've already read maybe a nostalgic favorite that can help as well. Tip number seven is huge and you're kind of doing that right now and that is to join a book community. So if you're on booktube, you're already kind of part of the community. There's tons of ways to engage with people and discuss and talk about books. And even if you don't like to engage and talk and discuss, watching booktube is cool. You can get a lot of value by listening to other people and what they think and um, just kind of going about it that way. So join a community, whether it's kind of from afar on the sidelines or engage fully, you know, join a book club in person with people, join a discord. There are plenty of there. Ours is down below in the description. There are tons out there. Every booktuber probably has one. Maybe buddy read with your spouse or your partner. I read a book for the first time ever with my wife not that long ago and it was awesome. Talking about books with other people and sharing their passion and enthusiasm and talking about different things and books books that they're reading, books that you're reading, sometimes that can be the savior of the dreaded reading slump. Tip number eight is super important. The book tube kind of community pushes, uh, you know, quantity a lot. We all say that the quality of books is more important than the quantity, but the truth is, um, there's definitely FOMO when it comes to books and everybody wants to read and enjoy as many books as they can a month. It's just, it's just the way we're built. We want to have the most fun in the shortest amount of time. And so it's important to remember, sometimes you may, you may just be burnt out and you may just need to take a break. Sometimes you just need to give your eyes a break. I personally like to do a lot of other hobbies uh, outside of reading. I love fishing. I love hiking when the weather's good. I, I enjoy camping a couple times a year. Uh, I like video games and movies. I like cooking. I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I love photography. Photography. If you don't want to step away completely and relax and refresh yourself, um, maybe you can just change the format. And if you listen to audiobooks, you'll give your eyes a break. You'll give your brain a bit of a different uh, stimulus and you can just relax a little bit while still reading. So that helps a lot. If you haven't tried audio, I urge you to reach out to some people who you trust and ask them who their favorite narrators are, some of the best narrators for some of the books that you might enjoy and try an audiobook. Tip number nine is kind of a weird one, but it's actually worked uh, for me before. And that is to reorganize your books, reorganize your shelves. Sometimes you can do like an unhaul. Sometimes you just got to go through your inventory and look at all the books that you have that maybe you are not interested in anymore that you might want to give away or donate. And you end up finding stuff that you forgot you had and remembering things just by going through them. What made you buy it in the first place? Or who recommended that to you? Or what video did you watch that 
you know, in, spark that interest for that book or that author. And sometimes just going through your books, reorganizing thing, you, you, things, you get a little bit more uh, pleasure out of the books that you've collected. Obviously, we all like to collect books and have books, and we like the idea of, of having those books, whether it's physical, audio, or even on the shelf. We like the idea of, you know, building a little bit of a collection of things that give us joy. Sometimes you just got to take stock, take inventory, go through all the stuff that you might not like, and that might steer you to something that you will like. Number 10 is pretty important, even though not everybody can do this. And that is, don't be afraid to DNF a book, but also don't be afraid to try a little bit of a couple books to see if something lands for you or something sticks, something sparks your interest to keep you going. The biggest contributor to a reading slump is to force yourself through what we call a slog or, or force yourself to read something that you are just not vibing with. Why? do that to yourself. We all read to have fun. Um, we're talking about reading for fun, reading for pleasure, reading mostly fiction is kind of what we're talking about. All the academic stuff, all the stuff that you have to read for other things, for school, for work. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about having fun. So if you're not having fun, maybe think about what it is that you're reading and try something else. Reading books for fun is not a contest. It's not about forcing it. If it's not working for you, my opinion is just to move on. Also, like I said, trying a chapter of a book or two or three can be a huge game changer. Just go through, you know, you're reorganizing your shelf. Like I said before, go through, pick a book that you that you have, that you, that you know why you picked, you know, you know why you thought you might enjoy that, but you just haven't gotten to it yet. Try two chapters of that book. Sometimes something as simple as that can help spark that joy. And next thing you know, you're five, 10, 15 chapters, 150 pages into a book that you probably wouldn't have touched otherwise. So go ahead, scan your shelves and just read a couple chapters of something that you weren't thinking about. The worst that can happen is you're not in the mood and you put it down. The best that can happen is it sucks you right in and you break through that reading slump and you start enjoying yourself again. So that's it guys, super quick video, 10 tips, how to break through a reading slump, how to, how to get out of that kind of book burnout state that we all sort of get into once or twice, couple times a year. It happens to everybody, especially when you typically focus around one or two genres, um, especially with long series. It's totally normal. If you're feeling that way, it's normal. It happens to everybody. I hope these tips helped. Again, I know that there's tons of videos out there. I hope you found something new on this list that you may not have thought about. And uh, that's it for me, guys. I'll catch you guys real soon on the next one. Thank you so much for watching.